Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be creating a hybrid scroll effect. So this is where basically we have like horizontal and vertical scrolling on one page. You can see here we're scrolling vertically at first, then we get to a specific section on the website and then it starts going horizontally. Uh, we'll reach the end of this section here and then we start going vertically again. You can have like an about section and then we can have as many kind of horizontal sections as you want really. I've just gone for two for this tutorial. It will be dynamic, we're just using the offset top property of the parent element just to work out when we should start scrolling horizontally. And then yeah, we have an end section there. So yeah, it's a really cool effect, you see it in a lot of modern websites, this kind of hybrid scrolling. And yeah, I thought I'd just try and implement that within a JavaScript. There's not much code to be honest, there's only, um, yeah, well, it's about 30, 40 odd lines of code um, in JavaScript to get this up and running. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it and let's get going, thanks. Okay guys, so to get started with this project, you can see I've just got the three usual files here. We have an index.html, a style.css, and an app.js file. Um, I also have an assets folder here just containing a font um, called New Makina. Um, I got this from Pangram Pangram, which is a font foundry, but use whatever font you want for this tutorial. Okay, so if we come into our index.html first, um, we'll just emit some boilerplate HTML5 code. I'm just gonna change the title to hybrid scroll and then we're just going to link uh, to our style.css in the header here and we'll just uh, link to our script uh, we'll use a script source tag and we'll go to app.js uh, down the bottom here okay so let's just make this a bit bigger so you can see as well and then so the first thing we want to do in our uh, html is we're just going to have a main element here and that's just going to be like basically the um, overall parent container for our website content. And then we're next going to have just multiple sections, okay? So we'll have an intro section. So we'll just say section here, so a section tag. And then in here, we'll have a div. And we'll give us a class of container. And actually, let's just open with live server just so we can see the changes as we go. Bring this over here. Okay, so now that we're in here, let's, um, let's make it a bit bigger actually. Okay, so inside this container, we're just going to have uh, just some initial intro text. So we'll just say uh, hybrid, h1 tag, we'll say hybrid um, scroll like so. And then underneath this, we'll just have a p tag with some lorem text. And then we'll just duplicate that down, do another p tag like so. So we have two paragraphs there. Okay, so now underneath this, that's our kind of intro section. I'm next going to create a um, div here underneath this. So we come out of that section and we're just gonna, uh, we'll give this div a class of sticky um, double underscore parent. Okay, so this is going to be like a sticky div that we're going to use to create this kind of horizontal scroll effect. And then we're gonna have a div, another div of a class of sticky within this div, the parent div. So let's put, give, give it a class of sticky like so. And then in here, we're just going to say um, a div of a class of scroll section. So just say scroll um, underscore section, like so. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much it for our uh, sticky section there. We're well, just going to have a few more sections just so we can demonstrate this effect fully. Okay, so I'll come here under here and I'm just going to create another, well, I'm gonna copy this section that we created and then we can just copy that down underneath the uh, sticky parent div. And then we're just going to, I'll say, this could be like an about section, for example. And then we're just, after this, we're next just going to create another um, scroll section. So I'll just uh, copy this down as well. This uh, sticky parent with all the uh, inner elements as well. And then finally, we'll just copy this section down again, and then we'll just have an end section. Uh, so we just say end here like so. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So if I just space these out, just so you can see easier all of the different sections we have. Okay, so that's pretty much it for HTML now. So let's move to our CSS. Um, so if we just come into our style.css, make sure that's saved. Yeah, style.css file. I'll change this to CSS as well, actually. 
Okay, so the first one I want to do is actually just load that uh, font we're using. So I'm just going to say at font face here, and we're going to just call this, I'll just say uh, Makina for now. Put that in quotes, like so. And then the source for this, we'll go dot oh, URL, we'll just say uh, dot forward slash assets. And then we just need to specify the format which is WAF2. Okay, so we've imported our um, font now. Next thing I want to do here is just uh, apply this, apply our global settings. So I'm just going to say margin zero. That will remove all of the default margins. And then we can do the same for the paddings as well, make that all zero. And then we'll set the box size to be border box. And then under here, I'm just going to say font family. And we'll just say uh, Makina like so. You can see now we have that font applied. Okay, so next thing we want to do here is just grab our HTML. So we just say HTML and our body. And we want to give these just a width of 100% and a height of 100% just to fill the screen or the viewport. And then that's pretty much it. And then we also want to do the same thing for main as well, actually. So I'm just going to say uh, main here. Remember, we uh, added that main element as the uh, kind of overall container element here for our uh, website content. OK, so now that we've done that, we can come under here. I'm just going to just uh, target my H1 elements and I'm going to give these font size um, of, we'll just say 4M to give them a bit of a, make them a bit big. And then um, I think that's pretty much it. So next thing I want to do here is I'm just going to next target my P tags, so paragraph tags, give these a width of 50%. And then I also want to give these just a margin as well. So margin of two rem and zero, just to space them out a bit like so. Okay, now next thing I want to do here is just target our individual sections. So we'll just say section. And I'm just going to give these a height of 100 viewport heights. Okay, so now we they're filling the screen at 400%. They take up 100% of the screen vertically, those section tags. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is just target our um, container elements. So remember we had these containers within each section. So let's just come here. We'll say dot container. And we're just going to give these each a padding of 5 rem. Just give some white space. Okay, so now we have that nice white space on the uh, side and the top. Okay, now the next thing I want to do here is we're just going to target the sticky elements next. So you remember we have the sticky sections here. Um, sorry, it's sticky parent. So, sorry, the sticky parent. So we'll target that next. So we'll just say dot sticky and then we'll say underscore parent. And then here we're just going to specify the overflow to be hidden. That means we can't kind of over scroll on that element. And then, I oh know we don't want to do that for this, sorry. I think we should, yeah, let's just set the height for now. We need to set the height to 500 uh, viewport heights. Okay, now the reason we're doing that is because when we're scrolling, you can see this is quite a large area, but this is because we're going to be using this scroll, this scroll in here to transform uh, the sticky uh, kind of um, horizontal scroll. We're going to be using JavaScript to transform that based on the scroll position. Okay, so that's why we need to have this 500 viewport kind of gap here um, with that sticky parent element. Okay, and the next one we want to do is just uh, set the dot sticky element. And then we're just going to say overflow hidden here. And then we also just want to say position and we're going to say sticky. Okay, and then we're going to say top of zero, zero, and then a height of 100 viewport heights. So let's just see what that's doing. Okay, so if I just do a border um, one pixel solid red, and then now you'll see basically when we get to that, that section, it, it sticks. Okay, um, if we say, for example, we, we can set the top, we can set it to be 10 pixels from the top or 100 pixels. This means when we scroll down, this, this container here will stop 100 pixels from the top whilst we're scrolling that parent element. Okay, so you'll see now when we're scrolling, we get it it's stuck there at 100 pixels from the top of the screen. When we reach the bottom of the sticky parent element, that's when it will continue to scroll, okay? But until then, it sticks to the top. So we just want to set that to be zero for now. We'll say zero. 
okay and then that will stay there nicely whilst we uh whilst we're on that section now the next thing we want to do here um so we've got the height the 100 people height up so that that section fills the screen completely okay and now the next thing we want to do is target the individual scroll sections as well so you remember we had the scroll sections within the sticky uh, container or parent so let's do that now we'll just say dot scroll section Okay, and then for this, we're going to give these a position of absolute. We'll say um, top zero. Uh, we'll give these a height of 100%. So that'll be 100 viewport heights, basically. It will fill the screen um, vertically. And then we're just going to say a width of 500 viewport uh, widths, okay? Okay, so it's kind of equal, well, we're making it equal to the, the kind of height, except we're just changing it to whips here. So make sure you, uh, yeah, these, these are always the same number. It has to be the same number as the viewport heights for this effect to work properly. Okay, because we're going to be using, obviously, that scroll position where we are to transform this uh, scroll section. And we're going to just basically translate the viewport height scrolling to transform the viewport width scrolling here. That, that's how this effect works. Okay, so the next thing I want to do here is just specify a wheel change. And we're going to be uh, applying the changes to the CSS transform. So this will just optimize the browser to perform those changes. And then we're going to display this using Flexbox, this element, because we're going to just set images next to each other. And then we're going to justify content with space between. And this will just space out the content within this container or this element evenly. So we're going to have four images within this scroll section and it will space those images out evenly across the 500 viewport width um, element. And then we also just want to add some padding here as well. So actually, so let's align the items first to be center. So they're nice and centered um, uh, vertically. And then we just add some padding as well of um, zero at the top and bottom and five VW. Um, yeah, for the... Uh, or the left and right okay so next thing well the final thing we need to do is just target the image elements that we're going to be adding with javascript and these will just have a standard width of 400 pixels uh, we'll give them a height of 80 percent to fill 80 percent of the uh, viewport height and then we'll just say object fit and we'll just say cover and this will basically cover the image to fill the um this these dimensions here but it will preserve the aspect ratio when we use this object fit cover attribute and then we can just position that position the uh, image to be centered okay so object is centered. That, that is it for our css so now what we need to do is just uh, use javascript just to apply some um some images and get this effect working properly so if you move to app.js folder um now the first thing I'm going to do here is just grab all of our sticky sections. Okay, so we'll just say const sticky sections equals. We're going to use an array here with the spread operator. We're just going to say document dot query select to all, and then we're just going to target all of our dot sticky elements. So now you'll see if we console dot log sticky sections, that should be sticky, not shricky. Sticky. If we go to our console here, you should see that we have an array of two sticky elements. Okay, so there's one here and there's one on here as well in these elements here. Okay, so now we have those. Next we want to do is just grab, um, we just want to actually, I've copied some images over. So let me just grab this array. So I've got an images array here. Okay, so let images equal square bracket for an array. And all I've done is just source some images from this website here just for the purpose of this tutorial. Obviously, use your own images, uh, what you want for this tutorial. But yeah, I've just grabbed some random images from this save.it website. That's why you can see this kind of save CDN. And these are just all web uh, images I've copied, like the address of these images into an array. I've only done four and I've just got the addresses and yeah, just separated them out. So I'm going to be using this array here. Um, now, what we want to do with these images is we're just going to, on the page load, we're going to cycle through this array. So we just say for each uh, image. And then here, what we're going to next do is we're just going to say sticky sections. Let's come back to our website here. 
and then we're just going to go through each of us so for each for both sticky sections we're just going to apply the same images just for the sake of speed here so for each section what we're going to do is just say we're going to create a new image so say let image equal document dot create element we want to create an image element so img we want to set that image dot source attribute to equal um, the image that we pass in up here. So for each images, we're setting the uh, image dot source. So that will be the, the the address of the image, and we're setting it to you know these these addresses up here. That's what that image is. What we pass in with the for each function. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do here is just kind of section, and then for each of our sections, we just want to say dot query selector. So remember, within each sticky section, we have this scroll section here. Okay, so we're just going to target that next. So I'll just say, let's just um, copy this over. And I'm just going to say dot query selector. And then we can just say dot scroll section. And then we can say here, um, dot append child. And then we can just append that image. And now you can see we have this well these images that have appeared okay and you'll see what i mean when we um let's just take that border off we don't need that anymore but with our images um yeah you can see that's we, with the like the kind of display flex when we align item center that just centers it nice and vertically and then we have a, a space between if we don't apply that you can see how they're just kind of sat next to each other when we do space between we get a nice white space and you'll see the rest when we perform the scroll animations in a sec Okay, you can see it gets stuck there when we're scrolling because we've got that sticky element, but we're going to be using JavaScript when we get to this point to transform this um, horizontally. Okay, so now that we've done that part, uh, let's just add some scrolling now. Let's get this scrolling effect working. So I'm just going to say, um, and we're going to create a transform function. Okay, so we say transform, and this is just going to take an element or a section Okay, and then here, what we're going to first do is we're going to grab um, the offset top of the parent. Okay, so to do that, we're just going to say const offset top. That's going to equal section dot parent element. And then we're just going to say dot offset top. So what's this doing? Let's just create another function that we're going to be using as well. We're going to obviously use the window uh, dot add event listener here and we're just going to listen to the scroll event okay and, that, and then we can take in the passing the um, event into the callback and then what we're just going to do here is just going to go for let i equal zero and whilst i is less than sticky sections dot length so the amount of sticky sections we have then we're just going to say i plus plus we're going to loop through each sticky section on scroll and then we're just going to say transform um, and then we're just going to say sticky sections I. Now, what this will do now at the moment, um, let's just console.log. Um, and we want to console.log that offset top. Okay. Oop. So what that's done is it gets uh, basically it gets the um, sticky parent position from the top of the parent container. So it's referring to the main. So basically this um, this sticky section here, this first one, is 933 pixels from the top of the uh, parent element, which in this case is um, so we have the sticky parent here. The parent element of that is the main element. OK, so that's why we've got this main element, just so we can get these offset top values for our sticky parent positions. Okay, so that is 933 pixels from the top of the main element. And the second um, sticky section is 6,531 pixels from the top. Okay, so that's why we're getting that. And we're getting that for each time we do this scroll. Okay, so now what we want to do with that is underneath this, we're just going to say const scroll section uh, equals section dot query selector and we just want to grab um, that scroll section 
Okay, so we're just going to say da -da -da -da, dot scroll uh, underscore section. Okay, so now if we console dot log the scroll section, you can see now we get our scroll sections for each of our sticky uh, parents. Okay, because we're going to just be applying transformations to these. So now the next thing we need to do is just um, work out a percentage of how much we want to transform this by. So I'm just going to say let percentage, that's going to equal, um, we're going to use two brackets here. And in this first, well, this second set of brackets, we're going to take the window dot scroll wire position. And that will give us the amount of pixels we've scrolled on the actual page. And then we're just going to minus that offset top. Okay, because we only want this percentage to start working when we um, when we uh, get to our the relevant position on the screen. We want this transformation to only start moving when we reach that point when it's stuck to the page. Okay, so we're subtracting that offset top, and then coming out of this, we're just going to divide uh, that by the window dot inner height. And then what we're going to do with this is times that by a one hundred. Okay, and then, so what we can say now is, um, we're just going to say scroll section. So what this equation actually does here, it just works out the kind of the percentage of the amount we've scrolled along the page when we get to that point on the screen where the uh, window dot scroll wire minus the offset top. So let's just do scroll section dot style. So we're going to target the scroll section dot style dot transform equals, and then we're going to say backticks here, we're going to say translate 3D, and then we're going to use a template literal here, we're just going to say minus uh, percentage, so we're going to get that percentage, and then um, after that we're just going to say uh, VH, VW, sorry, okay, and then the other two arguments could be zero, zero. Okay, and then next thing we want to do here, um, I think, okay, so, okay, that percentage, right, um, so what's going on here? Let's just see what's going on. Is that applying a transformation there? It's not, okay. Scroll section, let's just console.log that scroll section just to see if we are getting the right um, element. <laughs> Okay, so we are getting that, and then we're just saying style. Sorry guys, just trying to work this out. Style.transform equals translate 3D. Oh, okay, we want the comma in there maybe. Ah, oh, now that's working. Okay, great. Okay, but it's still not quite what we want it to do. So let's just, um, have a look at this. Let's just delete that console log. Now what we need to do here is we're just going to say um, percentage, we're going to grab that percentage and it's going to equal if we're going to say percentage here and if that is less than zero, it's a question mark here, so we're saying if percentage is less than zero then we want it to transform, want the transform to be zero. Okay, um, else we're going to say if the percentage is greater than 400 then we'll just keep it at 400 else we'll just say percentage like just transform okay and now what that will do that will make sure the transformation will only start when we get to that point on the screen and now you can see we're getting that transformation applied it will go to the very end and then we'll start scrolling down so we get that kind of nice hybrid scroll effect 
Okay, so let me just try to explain this clearly what's going on. What we're doing here is we're basically just working out the percentage of the amount we've scrolled on the page of the screen, okay? So we're saying percentage here, we're taking our scroll wire position and then we're dividing that by the window dot inner height and then we times it by the 100. That gets us the percentage, but we're subtracting the offset top of the parent element just to make sure that the transformation only starts when we get to that point on the screen, okay? So that's why we subtract that offset top, just to make sure that this only starts transforming properly when we get to that point. Okay, and then what we're doing with that is we are using that percentage of the inner height, but we're, transla we're translating it on the 3D on the x-axis using the viewport width. Okay, so that's why we have, we're kind of converting the viewport height to the viewport width. You'll see here, um, for example, when we transform, now that we're transforming that here, you can see in this element here, it will go up to 400 viewport widths. Okay, and then it will stop. And we have to keep, make sure it's only 400. As you know, we had a width of 500 pixels, but if we go to the full 500, this will then go off the screen. So that's why I only translating it to minus 400 viewport widths. Okay, so that's how this kind of effects works. And it will do the same thing when we get to the, the second point as well. So we start translating it there. And that's why we use that off, offset top variable just to calculate when the um, this, this scroll section should start um, being transformed with JavaScript. Okay. Um, this works brilliant on mobile devices as well. So if we just show you that here, obviously you'd wanna, let's just, um, Let's just do a media query here. So, um, oh, wait, it's just like copying the um, this syntax. So we just copy this over. Come to our CSS. We'll just say at media screen max width six hundred. Um, we'll just say uh, p uh, width ninety percent. So now. And also, let's just um, let's grab our container. Obviously, yeah, changes to your own, but this is just yeah. I'm just flying through this just for the purpose of this tutorial. We'll just say pad in one rem, and there you go. You get the kind of the scroll effect on mobile devices as well. It looks really uh really nice. You probably want to adjust the image size. I guess we'd just save here, for example, image. I don't know, width um, 200 pixels or 300. It's a bit better. And there you go. That's how you get that kind of nice hybrid scroll on your websites. Um, seen this quite a lot. Always wanted how to just apply it within the JavaScript. And that sticky parent element plays a really key part in getting this effect working. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. And this is also, yeah, this will also just work for any kind of viewport size now. You'll always get that same animation or positioning applied as we're using viewport width and viewport height dimensions to apply this transformation. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.